Champion is now also the WBC heavyweight champion. A seventh round TKO of Deontay Wilder here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. I'm Stan Verrett along with Mark Kriegel and former pound for pound champion Andre Ward. We're going to get their thoughts on the fight in just a minute. But Deontay Wilder left after the stoppage, bleeding from his mouth and from his left ear. Bernardo Osuna has the latest on Wilder. The latest on Deontay Wilder's situation is that he will be taken directly to the hospital. He will not speak at the press conference. There's two doctors working diligently on Deontay Wilder. His ear is bleeding badly. They are stitching him up, and they will immediately take him to the hospital for a neurological test and to make sure that he is okay after that brutal beatdown he suffered at the hands of Tyson Fury. Obviously, lots of concern for the health and well-being of Deontay Wilder, his corner, Stopped this fight in the seventh round after he stopped throwing punches. He was taking punishment in the corner. So they got him out of there. Uh, and again, hopefully uh, this all works out and, and he can recover fully. There's a brutal poetry in that shot. You know, you live by the punch. That's also what happens, as you know full well, champ. Yeah, I've seen this movie so many times in my 25 years in this sport. And it's not just... These types of things can happen to anybody. But they happen oftentimes to guys who exclusively depend on one thing. And we know what that is for Deontay Wilder, and that's power. He's building his whole reputation. His whole foundation is built on fear. When you have that kind of reputation and you have all these knockouts, sometimes your team can become enamored with you. Instead of challenging you and saying, son, you may fire me, but I'm going to point out every flaw you have because one day, we're going to face a guy who's not going to follow the script. Tonight, Tyson Fury didn't follow the script. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, again, for a puncher, the fall is abrupt. And we saw that tonight. And I don't believe that Deontay Wilder is going to exercise that rematch clause in the next 30 days. His pride will tell him to, but I don't think he will. And I don't, I don't think he should. He shattered psychologically. Now, that doesn't mean that he won't ever win a boxing match ever again. But I, I know the psychology of a guy with that kind of reputation. When it's, when it's, when, when it's taken from you, not, not – he could have justified it. I'm talking Wilder could have justified getting hit with a big shot and saying, oh, he caught me cold. Right. You got beat up, you got outclassed, and you got stopped on your feet. Your team, the ones who are your biggest cheerleaders, the ones who – you know, are calling out all the good in you. They thought enough of you to throw in that towel. Not just any team member, but one who had a career in the sport of boxing, has been knocked out before. He knew what Wilder was going through, and he saved him from getting knocked out cold. I think one of the things you're saying here, and something, again, you know full well from Kovalev, the fall is steeper yeah. for a bully. Yeah. And you, you talk about following the script. The guy who followed his script, and people doubted, are you, are you conning us? Are you not? was Tyson Fury, because he didn't depend on power. He depended on craft. He executed his game plan. Yeah. He knew exactly what he was doing, when he was going to do it, and why. He had a sense of purpose with everything he went through this entire camp. And Tyson Fury now, the lineal heavyweight champion, is also the WBC heavyweight champion. So we'll see if uh, he'll try to unite those belts with, those belts with Anthony <laughs> Joshua, uh, because Dre says, looks like there's not going to be a rematch. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. I just want to give Deontay Wilder some credit tonight because he didn't quit. He wanted to go out on the shield. His eardrum was bleeding, mm -hmm. and it looks like it was ruptured. The left side of his jaw was swollen. It could be fractured or broken. I'm not sure. He didn't look for a way out when he could have. He stood up. The corner stopped it. He didn't stop it. So I just want to take my hat off to him and say kudos for that. I hope he physically recovers, but he did a good job in terms of showing his heart tonight. One of the big questions we had going into this mm -hmm. fight was, how would the trainer change work for Tyson Ooh. Fury? He left Ben Davison, who had mm -hmm. been his close, who is his close friend, had been his trainer, yeah. uh, leading him during his career up to this point. But in December, he made the switch to Sugar Hill Stewart, the nephew of the great Emmanuel Stewart, and it worked out perfectly. I don't think that Tyson Fury could have gotten here without Ben Davison. Wow. Ben Davison was, was crucial, instrumental in having him come back and having him regain his sanity and his training habits and make certain fundamental decisions about himself that he needed to train. But the decision to go back to Sugar Hill Stewart, back to the Kronk style, the fundamental style, also is Andy Lee's. He asked his cousin Andy Lee, former WBO middleweight champion, what do you think I do now? Go to Sugar Hill. 
He's the closest thing to a manual steward there is. And you made this point. It was like listening to a manual in the ring. I could hear Emmanuel Stewart mm -hmm. in Sugar Hill at certain points in that fight in the corner where he said, man, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. You see the results. Step to him. You're too far out. He was giving him certain instructions, and then he, he gave the famous Emmanuel Stewart line. Then we can go home. Right. Emmanuel Stewart would always say that to his head. Man, do this and do that. Then we go home. Well, he was right tonight. Nothing were, fancy, just devastating. Right. They were confident and focused. They they said what their game plan was. We wondered if there was some gamesmanship in that, but mm -hmm. then Tyson Fury came out with the game plan. He said he would execute and executed it flawlessly. Yeah. Seventh round TKO, and now he's the WBC champion. We wait to see what's next, whether there's a rematch or a unification bout with Anthony Joshua, his fellow Britain. But for now, the celebration is on for the thousands <laughs> of British fans who made the trip to see the Gypsy King. Boxing Zubin, I don't think we thought it would end like this this quickly. Yeah, any other night, that story with the goalie would be the biggest story in sports. But instead, it's Fury over Wilder and fight to the legendary trainer, Teddy Atlas, is here. We were watching your round-by-round -round scoring. You gave round two to Wilder, and from there on out, it was all Fury. What happened? Well, first of all, full disclosure. Full disclosure. I picked Wilder to win. Figured the eraser would take care of a lot of sins. Tonight it didn't. Also, full disclosure, I've been saying from the beginning of his career that Wilder, and with a lot of attacking when I say it, especially from Wilder's people, that Wilder can't fight. Can't fight. Never learned how to fight. But punches are not made. They are born. Mm. And he was born with that great eraser, with that thunderbolt in the right hand. But tonight, it wasn't there to pull him out of the fire. It wasn't there to say, tonight he got exposed because he doesn't know how to fight, because his technique is so good. And all credit to Fury. And I was talking about it that instead of being a Ferrari, he decided to be a Jeep. Yeah. Jeeps can be good. Jeeps can go up terrain. Jeeps can, you know, go up hills. Jeeps can crash into things. Jeeps can knock things down. And my point was that he was going to have a kamikaze attitude. Yeah. And he did. It was to just not care. Sometimes maybe it's good not to care. Maybe it's good not to care, to just go in there and go after it. And that's what Fury did tonight. He didn't try to box. He didn't use his greatest assets, his legs, his elusive ability. He used his size, his determination, and he took advantage of a guy who was there to be taken advantage. A guy whose technique was there to fail him on any given night. Yeah. And his power was there to save him on any given night. Tonight, his technique failed him and his power Oh, it never got a chance to save him. It seemed like Fury, once he knocked him down that first time, he wasn't letting up at that point. He knew he could smell that blood, or he was lick the blood. At one point, he was doing that. <laughs> but it, it looked like he knew he had him. Do you, would you agree? Yeah, he did. I mean, a fighter knows what's going on in that ring. A fighter can feel the guy. Even in a clinch, you can feel his strength. You can feel his submission. You can feel the little secrets. There's secrets going on in there. You know, if the guy's given a little bit, if he's not pushing back, Fury felt that. He felt it, and, and it gave him confidence. It gave him steam to go forward. He understood what was going on, and he followed what he understood the right way to victory. Historically, and this is where we love having Teddy on, I mean, he's been affiliated with so many of the greats. They said if Fury were to win this fight, he'd become one of the greatest British boxers of all time, right there with Lennox Lewis. He was actually ringside with Joe Tessitore and Andre Ward calling the fight. In history, I know it's just one fight, but for the hype for this fight, part two with possibly part three coming, where does Tyson Fury fall within the great British boxers we've seen? I mean, you've, you've really had a, you got to give him a little bit more time. I mean, this was a great upset. And it was on a great stage. I mean, the promotion for this fight oh. was unheard of. I mean, it was Super Bowl ads. I mean, so everybody was watching this fight, so it's going to get all the attention. And the attention that it deserved and that Fury deserved. But at the end of the day, you know, you still got to give him a little bit more of a resume. Let him go a little longer. But right now, hey, he's in a throne, baby. He picked the right set to come out in. Yeah. Sitting on that throne. He's, <laughs> he's the king, baby. He's, the king. he's on the throne, baby. <laughs> but don't forget, there's a guy over in London. Yeah. His name is Joshua. You know, I know everyone's going to talk about bringing this back. Sure. But can you imagine how big that fight's going to be? Oh, my Anthony goodness. Jo Let me just tell you something. Oh, yeah? Joshua 
was putting 90,000 fannies in his seat in Wembley when he was fighting doormen <laughs> from the King's Arm restaurant. <laughs> yeah, 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 the guys were serving hamburgers, good hamburgers. Yeah. But, but, uh, and they put mayonnaise on them over there. Oh, it, yeah, that's the only <laughs> bad thing. But can you imagine oh. they'd have to build another stadium to put Joshua and Fury together? Oh. I mean, that, that's the fight they're going to be talking about. As much as people, you know, around here are going to want to talk about a third. Trilogy. I get it. I get it. But they're going to talk about that. And you know what speaks at the end of the day? Money. That's true. It's always. <laughs> it's always. Money.